We're all used to the rules of society that we have to abide by, but with different cultures, history, and experiences, the legal systems of each country can be vastly different. While something could be allowed and even encouraged in one place, it could be offensive and insulting somewhere else. It's time to take a trip around the globe to find the 15 weirdest laws. Let's begin. Number 15. Illegal to build sandcastles in Spain. Tourism is a vital part of the economics of most countries around the world, and while they certainly want visitors to feel welcomed and be able to enjoy themselves, there are limits as to how far this goes. What's okay in one country can quite easily be frowned upon in another, and one of the biggest mistakes you could ever make is to somehow affect a place's natural beauty. Some tourists also have a bit of a habit being less respectful towards the places they have traveled to than they would be if they were at home. And this has led to Spanish authorities bringing in a series of rules to encourage appropriate behavior. In the town of Salobrena, for example, people can be fined as much as $3,000 for lighting fires on a beach, whether it be barbecues, fireworks, or cigarettes. And in other regions, there are local laws and bylaws expressly ban the use of soap or shampoo in the water or drinking alcohol on the beach. The reasons behind these laws are understandable, though, because they're aimed at ensuring the beaches remain safe places for everyone who visit, and they want to reduce contaminants that are released into the environment. But in 2016, a peculiar law was introduced in Benidorm for Levante Beach, which forbids people from building sand structures of any kind, with punishments ranging from a warning to a fine of up to 200 bucks. There are other places in Tenerife and Mallorca that have similar restrictions too, with the only exceptions being made for those who have obtained a permit well in advance. Number 14. Illegal to use water guns in Cambodia. When temperatures rise and we begin to swelter in the heat, it's time to turn on the aircon and perhaps retrieve your treasured water gun for a refreshing battle in your backyard with your friends. But as harmless as they may seem, water guns aren't exactly welcome everywhere that you may go. In 2018, officials in the city of Siem Reap in Cambodia, a notoriously hot country, brought in legislation that prevented stores from selling water guns in the lead-up to the New Year celebration. And it was all supposedly because of the problems that are caused by tourists during the festivities. The crackdown saw stores being forced to sign an agreement that they wouldn't sell them, with the focus being mainly on the city center, where there's a higher number of tourists than elsewhere. But the official explanation being that it was to tackle the danger of traffic accidents and public disorder. Apparently, particularly around New Year, it's not uncommon for visitors to arm themselves with water guns and rampage through the city, aiming their sights at anyone or anything they see. This includes pedestrians, motorbikes, and even cars, and has in recent years caused a number of accidents. An official announcement said that if they want to play with water, they can go to designated areas where the fire truck is used near the Banyan Temple. And there's also going to be restrictions on the sale of talcum powder, because this is also something that's commonly thrown onto people, often to make it easier for thieves to steal earrings and necklaces in the confusion. Number 13. Illegal to fart in Malawi. Countries around the world have for decades been bringing in new laws that aim to improve the air quality. When once there were factories churning out huge amounts of pollution into the sky that severely affected people's health, things have in many places been hugely improved. New initiatives such as charges for vehicle access and restrictions on emissions allowed in cities have also proven to have improved air quality in cities, but there's still a long way to go. In 2011, the government in Malawi brought in a new piece of legislation called the Air Fouling Legislation, which in one clause said, any person who vitiates the atmosphere in any place so as to make it noxious to the public health of persons in general dwelling or carrying on business in the neighborhood or passing along a public way shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. The intent of this, of course, was to criminalize the careless release of chemicals into the environment that would be detrimental to people, such as by burning rubber tires or smoking. But soon after, one of the lawmakers pointed out that because of the phrasing, this could be interpreted as making it illegal to fart in a public place, with each person releasing wind on average between 5 and 15 times a day. This had the potential to cause serious legal problems, and even though most agreed that the law wouldn't be enforced for this, they had to accept that someone could technically be fined for it. Number 12. Illegal to display images of Winnie the Pooh in Poland. 
He's the lovable and adorable creation of author A.A. A. Milne, who lived in the 100-acre wood with his friends Tigger, Kanga, Piglet, and Eeyore, and would go on to be licensed by Disney for a hugely popular franchise. But Winnie the Pooh isn't exactly welcome everywhere in the world. Surprisingly, the honey-loving bear was banned in 2014 in the Polish town of Cuzin, after the character was suggested as the mascot of a new children's playground that was being built. During the council meeting, the first objection to the use of Winnie the Pooh was because of the fact he didn't have a complete wardrobe, and that was because he was only dressed from the waist up. He was in danger to children. The conversation then moved on to a series of increasing offensive and ridiculous statements before they decided to introduce a law that banned any images of the character and chose a Polish bear that was fully clothed as the mascot for the playground instead. It's definitely one of the more bizarre examples of local government decision making in recent years and surely makes you question why some people have the authority to create new laws at all if all they seem to do is focus on issues like this. Number 11. Illegal to Climb a Tree in Canada For anyone who's grown up outside of a city center, one of the rites of passage is surely to at least attempt to climb a tree. You can spend a long time finding the right one with solid enough branches that are spaced out enough for you to reach the top, and there's always the chance that if you make the wrong move, you'll come tumbling back down to the ground with an almighty thud. It's this risk of hurting yourself that has led one town's authorities to take a rather radical step and completely outlaw the climbing of trees within the public parks. According to officials in Oshawa, Canada, it's because they care deeply about the safety of their citizens and there's no reason to ever need to climb a tree yourself. If there's an emergency, like a cat that's become stuck, they said that you should instead call the fire department as opposed to trying to rescue it yourself. Many in the community, of course, saw this as a gross misuse of funds and a waste of time for emergency services, but also assumed that there was very little chance of it being enforced. Thing is, it's also a law that's in a place of some parts of Toronto, too, and the police officers there have been known to take the law very seriously. In 2013, a 22-year-old had been climbing an Austrian pine in Bellevue Square Park and was arrested once he returned back down to the ground. He was given a $365 fine and ironically, despite having safely climbed up and down the tree, suffered from a broken collarbone while he was being cuffed by the officer. Number 10. Illegal to Kill Bigfoot in Washington State Communities around the world have countless stories of mythical creatures, both good and bad, that have so far remained elusive to cameras and scientific proof. And while many form a part of local beliefs and superstitions, there's perhaps none as famous as Bigfoot, also known as the Sasquatch. It's been part of folklore in North America for hundreds of years and is described as being a potential missing link between the time when apes walked on all fours and when humans stood up tall. Said to be about nine feet tall, hairy, muscular, and ape-like, Bigfoot keeps away from built-up areas and lives in the forests and the wilderness, possibly in Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. Whether or not you believe the tales of the beast to be true, it's definitely helped tourism in the region and has inspired countless people to travel there and try to be the person that once and for all proves that Bigfoot's real. The risk, though, is that if you were to kill a Bigfoot in Skamania County in Washington, you'd not only be world famous for confirming its existence, but you'd also be facing five years in jail. In what's believed to be the only enforceable law worldwide that protects what's generally seen as a mythical creature, the county created an ordinance in 1969 that declared it to be a Sasquatch refuge because the species is endangered and that anyone even attempting to hunt one could be fined up to a thousand bucks. While it may seem strange, there's actually good reason for this. It was in that decade that the number of people trying to find Bigfoot rose rapidly and many would arrive in the county with a large amount of weaponry. The intent was that the law would prevent any people from being accidentally shot by one of the hunters and so far, it's achieved its aim. Number 9. Illegal to run out of gas in Germany The Autobahn in Germany is the name given to the federally controlled highway system across the country that's famous worldwide for being one of the only road systems that has stretches where there's no actual speed limit. In fact, around 70% of the Autobahn only has an advisory speed limit, which is set at 81 miles or 130 kilometers an hour. So you could be happily driving more than double this past a police car and they wouldn't mind at all. Despite this, the road network is surprisingly safe, but this is also because a number of rules that are enforced to prevent reckless behavior. Tailgating, for example, can land you with a $450 fine. 
You can only overtake on the left, and a lane must be kept free if there's a traffic jam so emergency services can use it. The other rule is that you can never stop on the Autobahn unless there's an emergency, such as being involved in an accident or experiencing a medical issue in your car. And the police are very strict on the definition of stopping without a reason. It's a federal law, for example, that there must be a fuel station every 34 miles or 55 kilometers. So if you're forced to stop on the road because you've run out of gas, not only will you potentially have a costly repair bill to you and your vehicle, but you could face unlimited fines being suspended for driving up to six months. And if you've stopped in a particularly dangerous place, a prison sentence of up to five years. Number eight, dogs must be walked daily in Rome. Around 33% of people worldwide have pets, a figure that rises to over 70% in the United States. And while the vast majority of people will treat them like another member of their family, some sadly fail to treat them properly. This has led to legislation being introduced across the globe to ensure animals are looked after in a fair way. But in some countries, these rules go far further than you might expect. In Rome, Italy, for example, it's estimated that there are around 150,000 dogs and 300,000 cats being kept as pets. Cats, of course, generally will leave and return home whenever they want, but dogs are far more reliant on their owners to take them for walks to ensure they remain fit and healthy. But local animal groups began noticing that a large proportion were becoming overweight. This led to the introduction of a new animal welfare law in 2005, with a range of measures aiming at improving the lives of pets, wild birds, and other animals, which included the banning of docking the ears and tails of dogs, leaving them in hot cars, keeping fish in round bowls, trimming cats' claws, the use of electric collars, displaying animals in windows, and insisting that each dog must be taken for a walk at least once per day. According to one proponent of the law, quote, it's good to do whatever we can for our pets who, in exchange for a little love, fill our existence with their attention, end quote. Yeah, and it's hard to disagree with that. Number seven, public buildings must have artwork in Wyoming. Usually you pass through a city or town in the United States and you'll notice the most elaborate and interesting buildings are the ones that host the local government. Typically old and architecturally impressive, it's perhaps no surprise that lawmakers with the power to spend taxpayers' money choose to work in the best places that they can. But it's also important that these public buildings form a central hub for the communities that they serve. There are now strict rules that have to be followed with any public structure, and there's a surprising law in Wyoming that takes things a step further. Known as the Art and Public Buildings Program, it was passed in 1991 and states that 1% of the construction cost of any new state-owned buildings must be used to place artwork in a public setting. The purpose behind this law wasn't just to make the buildings more beautiful, but also to celebrate local artistic ability. And each time a new building is built, a committee is formed that will ultimately choose which artworks to acquire and install. Far beyond being paintings hung in a hallway, the initiative has seen countless sculptures and even lighting installations being placed around the state and is triggered for every public construction project. From seats of governments to college expansions, it's generally regarded as having been a resounding success, although there's always questions about whether the funds could have been targeted towards the communities more effectively. Number six, illegal to play dominoes in Spain. Located in southwestern Spain, the city of Seville is known as a cultural hub and fascinating place to have first been founded around 2,000 years ago. With countless theaters, museums, and a thriving nightlife, it attracts people from far and wide. But while tourism is crucial to its continual success, city officials have in recent years taken steps to preserve its charm and prevent the party goers from taking over. Bustling bars open late into the night, alfresco dining and flamenco music wherever you turn may seem like an ideal place to visit. But for locals, the loud noises late into the night were becoming intolerable and was even blamed on poor test results at schools. In 2014, new laws were brought in that banned virtually anything that is noisy after dark, from loud televisions to eating and drinking next to terraces, dragging chairs along pavements, rolling beer barrels in the streets, and even tidying up outdoor areas of restaurants after they've closed. One of the more surprising activities caught up in the legislation, though, is that it also banned late-night outdoor games of dominoes and dice, activities that would often draw huge crowds who cheer on every move. Fines for breaking the rules range between $300 and $250,000, depending on the severity of the infraction. And in the years since it was brought into force, it's been credited with effectively curbing the noise pollution. 
Number 5. Illegal to feed pigeons in Venice With around 60,000 tourists visiting per day compared to the 55,000 permanent residents of the historic island city, Venice is one of the most famous cities in the world thanks to its network of canals, its rich history, and romantic appeal. Throughout history, it's been a cultural center and a wealthy place, and while tourism is the main driver of its economy in modern times, this has come at a cost. It often feels overcrowded and unclean, and the authorities have had to step in to take the usual step of limiting tourism in order to help preserve the city for the future. Some of the new rules involve banning cruise ships from sailing as close as it was previously possible, and the introduction of a tourist fee for everyone who visits. One of the more surprising rules, though, came into force in 2008, when it became illegal to feed pigeons, with fines starting at around 78 bucks. Anyone who's visited the city before then would have known how much of a tradition it was once in St. Mark's Square, and how you'd buy a bag of grain from local vendors and almost immediately be swarmed by the hungry birds. Of course, while people had been making a living by selling grain like this for more than a century, it attracted a far larger population of pigeons, which was beginning to cause irreparable damage to the city's marble statues and buildings. At one point, it was estimated that it was costing the equivalent of $300 per Venetian taxpayer per year to clean up, and since the ban was enacted, there's no doubt that the square in particular has felt a lot cleaner. Number 4. It's illegal to throw an octopus in Michigan. Sports fans are known for their obsessiveness over their chosen teams, and some rather strange behavior that happens as a result, but a story from 2011 showed both how bizarre sporting tradition can be and how they're able to unexpectedly reveal laws that people didn't realize existed. A Detroit Red Wings fan had been at the first game of the playoffs and, as he described it, carried out his tradition, along with a number of others, whereby he'd walk down from where he was sitting and then throw an octopus onto the ice. He had done it after the stoppage following a goal, and it was the sixth one to be thrown down that game, but to his surprise, he was arrested and fined 500 bucks. According to a city ordinance, it's forbidden to throw objects onto playing areas during a sporting event, and this was a law that had been in force for decades. It hadn't, though, been enforced during Red Wings games before, and even the security staff had let the fan in with the octopus, fully knowing what he was about to do with it. The thing that changed on that occasion was a directive from the league to prevent anything like it from happening nationwide, and this fan was just the first to be charged for breaching this rule. Number 3 illegal to wear camouflage in the Caribbean. Depending on where you live, you may have a different view and experience of the types of clothing that you're allowed to wear in public, with some countries having relaxed views towards attire and others being far more strict. This can lead to unexpected problems when visiting places that have rules different to what you're used to. And there's a law in many parts of the Caribbean that's caught plenty of tourists out. In countries like Jamaica, St. Lucia, Grenada, Barbados, Dominica, and many more, it's expressly forbidden to wear any form of camouflage clothing unless you're an active member of the military in that country. This doesn't just cover things like shirts and shorts, but also accessories like wallets, purses, and hats, and applies even if there's one small piece of patterning. The reason for this is that the authorities don't want anyone mistakenly thinking that you're an authorized member of the military or police, and camouflage is seen as a quick identifier of them for anyone who's in difficulty and need of assistance. Punishments range from fines to potentially embarrassing confiscation of the offending articles of clothing. So if you're ever visiting one of those islands, the best bet is to leave the camo at home. Number 2. It's illegal to handle salmon in a suspicious way in the UK. Due to its flavor and texture, and the variety of ways that it can be prepared, salmon is one of the most popular species of fish that's consumed worldwide, with around 2.5 million tons being sold each year, a figure that's equivalent to somewhere between 288 and 674 million individual fish. While some are caught in the wild, the vast majority are now farmed to keep up with demand, and this gave rise to a series of techniques that would be used to increase their size, embolden their color, and enhance their flavor in cruel and unsafe ways. It was becoming such a problem that the government of the UK took action and passed a piece of legislation called the Salmon Act 1986. Its purpose was to define what salmon fisheries were, what approved methods of capturing salmon are, and regulating the salmon dealers. It also had what at first seems like possibly the strangest piece of legislature that's ever been written into law, that it's illegal to handle salmon in suspicious circumstances. 
The 69 paragraphs of the act don't go into any further detail as to what suspicious circumstances may actually be, and plenty of people were left scratching their heads as they tried to figure this out for themselves. There's probably no need for you yourself to worry about this rule, though, because rather than targeting people who are innocently trying to prepare an evening meal, it's referring to people trying to sell salmon that's been illegally acquired, either by using unapproved fishing methods or after being stolen from a farm. Number 1. It's illegal to die in France There are a few things that are absolutely certain in life, but one that we can all count on is that eventually one day our lives will come to an end. Most of us hope that when this moment comes, we'll be surrounded by family and loved ones after living a fulfilled existence. But you better be careful where you choose to spend your final days, because you could find yourself in a lot of trouble if you die in the wrong place. In the village of Saporon, which is near Bordeaux in France, the mayor sent a message to each of the 260 residents that all persons not having a plot in the cemetery and wishing to be buried here are forbidden from dying in the parish, going on to say that offenders will be severely punished. The problem that had arisen was the local cemetery was completely full apart from several plots that had already been purchased ahead of time by some of the residents. Attempts at expanding the cemetery had failed, so there was nowhere else to bury people in the parish. Quite what the punishment would be isn't entirely clear, but fortunately no one's broken the rule yet to find out. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.